Imagine you buy a new camera. Would you rather choose one with perfect autofocus or would you aim for ultimate best possible image quality? Well, thanks to DJI, this is no longer an either or question. I am looking into the barrel of a fully manual IREX CineLens T1.5, currently filming at a T2, mounted on a fully manual Blackmagic full frame 6K cinema camera. algorithm works, it locks onto my face, but there are some caveats. Where do you place your microphone when you place the lighter on top? How does motor noise affect your recording? And how do we clear matte boxes if we put the lighter underneath? First the pros, then the cons. The number one reason here I think is that it works with any manual lens, including anamorphic lenses. The second reason is that it works very well in low light conditions. Um, it's well known that LiDAR outperforms face attack autofocus, let alone contrast based autofocus in low light conditions. That's a big plus. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, there's another major reason and what makes this so seamless. It's the manual autofocus uh, option that you have which means a manual override. You can just hold tight to this wheel in front of the grip and it will basically lock the autofocus. You will feel the resistance in your finger as the wheel tries to move. As soon as you release your finger, it will snap back to what it's focused on. This works and it's a seamless integration. Again, perfect user experience. Now we have some of the pros. What about the cons? Um, so far, you know, well, availability <laughs> is one of the cons right now. It's August and I've received my unit already, but for about four months now, there has been silence about this product. Many have ordered it and haven't received it yet from what I read online. Uh, there seems to be problems with delivery. Some say there was a recall. It's unclear and DJI isn't really quite open about what has happened. Well, whatever it is. There is a lack of availability and uh, there is a lack of reviews which motivated me to shoot this video here. This is not a full product review but rather again I wanted to outline some of the challenges in using it and mounting it on your camera. This brings me to the first downside of this LiDAR Motor DJI Focus Pro system. You need to place the LiDAR somewhere and it needs to be centered aligned with uh, a lens. So you either place it on top of the lens Normally you would see people mount it on the top handle or where the code shoe mount is for your shotgun microphone. Or you would mount it underneath the lens. Microphone related problems are twofold. First, where do you put your microphone if you put your lighter on top of your camera? And second, if you put it on your cage, then what happens if the microphone picks up focus motor noise? And it will pick up focus motor noise. I've put my microphone on top of the top handle and the tilt of top handle is rather high. However, it still picks up the focus motor noise a little bit. The DJI Focus Pro Creator Combo is designed and aimed at the one-man band filmmaker that uses a camera and everything by themselves and of course in those use cases you will want a camera mounted shotgun microphone. Of course you could say like um, an extension to move the shotgun mic further away but I don't have that and my shotgun mic is rather short. So yeah now to the challenges of using and mounting the lighter. Most camera makers put a label, a little marker on the body of the camera to show where the focus plane is located. Again, we need this position of the sensor to measure the distance between that point and the LiDAR lens. The LiDAR has its own lens, basically facing in the direction of the actual camera lens. But if you don't know where the sensor plane is located, then you have to just guess by the millimeter. 
And this is kind of difficult. I hope that uh, Blackmagic Design would just put this mark on the camera body because when I dismount the lens, what I see, I think is not the sensor, but the OLPF. Or instead, just let us know, you know how deep the sensor sits behind the flange. Um, that would be helpful. No matter where you place the lighter unit, you want to make sure that it's always in the same spot whenever you rig up your camera. This is why I would not recommend using a flexible monitor arm that's sometimes suggested to use or place the lighter wherever you want, because in my experience they easily just dismount and then they're a screw and it could trip your lens calibration. Using the matte box in combination with the lighter unit makes things a bit complicated and cramped, so you need to be low enough with the lighter to clear the field of view. Well, the trick is to offset it so far below that you clear the matte box. To do this, Blackmagic users can use the battery grip. The downside to that is that it's very difficult to give lens support. And when you have a heavy IREX lens or anything similar, and on top of that have a matte box that also weighs with filters inside and stacked filters, then I wouldn't want to go without lens support, to be honest. So I bought a lens support that's more than five, six centimeters high, and it's still not long enough to reach the lens. So the Blackmagic battery grip wasn't really a solution for me. To offset the lighter without the battery grip, I just placed a secondary base plate underneath the tilter base plate. It's a small rig base plate from my old rig. And underneath this secondary base plate, I screwed a normal base plate from any tripod. This one is from a Geon 3S crane uh, gimbal. Ideally, you want to have the lighter flush at basically like an extension of the rods or rails. Once you achieve that, it's basically mounted in a perfect way. The second challenge is to bring it forward just as much a little bit in front of the lens if you use a matte box. If you don't use a matte box, it should sit flush with the lens, but with the matte box, it's important to clear those, the underside of the matte box, so bringing it a little bit to the front like this will help. You should also bring it as close to the lens as possible because, you know, your lighter and the camera lens have different fields of view, of course. Depending on the lens you use, this can be a bit distracting. And to minimize this distraction, it can be helpful to just minimize this distance, uh, the distance between lighter and lens. I mean, if it latches on like me now to the face, it's not an issue. But if it does not focus on any phase or moving object, the LiDAR would just focus on what's centered at the center of its image. Now, what the LiDAR sees at the center of its image is not necessarily the same point, vertically speaking, if that makes sense, because what's already in the field of view of the LiDAR unit may not even be visible yet in your camera lens. And that can be distracting when the LiDAR focuses on some object that it sees as the center, that's not even in frame yet, so your shot is not in focus. Of course, in the end, you have to watch both monitors and then frame your shot using the camera monitor, but as long as the LiDAR is relatively close to the lens, it brings those focal points or center points of your images sort of closer together, I think, if I'm not wrong here, but it just works better for me. Another option to place the lighter in a different position is, of course, to change the little uh, arm that's attached to the lighter originally. I only found one aftermarket product online and it was kind of expensive, so I thought, why not rather use what I have at home? So now in my current setup, I placed the microphone on top of the top handle using a cold true mount and I put the lighter underneath using the method that I just explained with two or three base plates. Before coming to that conclusion, I mounted the lighter on top of the top handle and as you see, the lighter is facing downward a bit, but this didn't really cause any real issue with focusing. The problem that arises from this configuration again is where do you put the microphone and where do you put it so that it is far away from the focus motor? Well, there's options that you have and I tried um, to use an extension that I had, an arm 
with a cold zoom mount at the end that I could mount to the side of my camera. And I tried both sides of the camera. Mounting the extension arm to the right side of my camera was not really working well because as you see my Aston mic has a rather short cable and I didn't want to use any extensions or things like that. So it didn't reach the port. That was a fail for me and I tried to mount the arm on the other side instead. But mounting the camera extension arm on the left side means that I need to put the DJI Focus Pro handle grip on the right side of the camera. Now that is possible because they are interchangeable and you just have to unscrew these two screws to mount it on the other side. Um, the challenge is however that with the Blackmagic camera you use your capability to also use it in combination with your battery grip. That is because the tilter cage at least in combination with the battery grip extension adapter only flows on the left side of the camera. The right side is without any rig options. You also lose the grip that's naturally there as part of the Blackmagic camera body which I really like. So it's not really an ideal configuration. I prefer to have my lighter on the left side and the microphone on top. One more issue that I haven't seen anywhere addressed. Um, be sure to calibrate your lenses after committing on where you place the handle and focus motor. This is because if you calibrate your lens and then switch the motor from one side of the lens to the other side, it will no longer function. You would still see the manual focus works and it's displayed correctly here when it comes to infinite and close focus. Once you put the Focus Pro into autofocus, however, it seems that infinite focus and close focus distance are mirrored or sort of mixed and the camera no longer focuses correctly. I think this could be easily avoided or fixed in a firmware update. DJI, if anyone sees this, please give us a symbol or an icon in the menu where we could just push a button to let the Focus Pro unit know that we've switched the side or direction of the focus motor. Again, when I bought this Blackmagic camera, I didn't know yet about the DJI Focus Pro as it was not yet announced. At the time, however, what has been announced was the 8K sensor of a different camera by DJI that uses that same LiDAR technology. And it was the DJI Ronin 4D. And I was that close to buying the infamous chicken camera. You've maybe seen the memes where people hold a chicken and uh, you know it perfectly keeps the head in balance. That's how the DJI Ronin 4D works. Manual lenses with autofocus in a chicken camera that's fully stabilized? Hell yes, I need that. But it costs 10,000 pounds or north of that. And the main question, the main issue, the main point why I didn't buy the DJI Ronin 4D camera instead of this Blackmagic was my concern that DJI would not support this product in 10 years from now, maybe. I mean, I don't know. DJI does offer a care package for the DJI Ronin 40 as it does for its drones, but um, you know that's like one north of thousand pounds for two years, right? And then what? <laughs> what if it breaks? By comparison, when this DJI Focus Pro hand unit was announced, I didn't hesitate. It's a fraction of the cost, about 800 pounds or something, for the creator combo that includes again the hand grip, the focus motor, and the lighter unit. And I'm not concerned here about warranty issues or any problems that may arise because even if the hand unit breaks, I can still use my Blackmagic camera. If the Blackmagic camera fails, I can use the hand unit with a new camera. It's perfect. But yeah, I still would love to have the 4D, the Ronin. Finally, DJI uses proprietary USB cables that somehow are chipped so in order to use the focus motor and the lighter, you need to use the originally provided USB cables. Those are not just ordinary USB-C cables. I've also read that you can use extensions as long as you use the original cables first and then 
you know, connect them to some other cables. But I would certainly not recommend using any extensions because the cables are already a weak link of the system. Not one that I am concerned about though when it comes to disconnecting. They're rather sturdy and easy to use. I would be just more concerned about what if the cable breaks in a shoot and I just want to have spares. So I look out to buy some, hopefully using original TGI cables, I don't mind. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to share them here. Thank you.